Hey, welcome to our first episode of Ask TG. This is the show where I grab your top comments and questions from our recent videos and get you answers from our Tom's Guide tech experts. I was not surprised by that at all. He could talk about this all day. I said this before and I'll say it again. I would probably buy with my own money. That would be the Pixel 8a. To your point, there's nothing better than just like using your thumb or finger to mm -hmm. know exactly how far in you want. Got a burning question that you want us to answer? Leave us a comment with the hashtag AskTG for your chance to get featured in our next episode and stay subscribed to see if you made the cut. Remember when good phones were less than $500? In our Samsung S24 FE hands-on video, a lot of you pointed out that it felt overpriced for what it offered. So what's the best bang for your buck phone that you can get today? To help answer that, I'm calling up John V, who's been reviewing these budget devices for years. Where are you at? Electrify Expo. This Jackrabbit bike, 28 pounds. I want to say it's super lightweight, it's thousand bucks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You remember when we did the S24 FE? It's kind of in like a weird spot. It's not quite premium, but it's definitely not budget either. So a lot of people were commenting and saying, look, for this price, they're expecting a lot more. If you really only had four or $500, what is the ultimate budget phone right now? I said this before and I'll say it again. I would probably buy with my own money. That would be the Pixel 8a. It's 499, so a dollar less than that threshold. But it has just everything that I want in the phone. You get the seven years of software support. You know, in that time period, you'll get the latest Android updates. Nice design, good battery life, excellent cameras, although it's kind of minor upgrades. And I know it doesn't have telephoto camera, I guess, but it has the ultra wide. It has a good enough main camera. You could crop it, you could do a zoom, at least two times zoom is great. AI, I think it's a big component of it, not the stuff like the summarization, the summary, and the writing tools. What's gonna to be like the deciding factor between maybe I'm happy enough with that four or $500 phone, whether it's the Pixel 8a or something similar, or do I wanna go up to the next step and spend maybe eight, nine, maybe even a thousand dollars on a phone? Since I'm great with cameras, I'm very confident taking photos, great video, it's about creativity. I just need a camera that functions fine and gets to the main stuff with the main camera. It's a matter of if you want the best results out of the box, spend the money. But if you're willing to tweak, willing to learn, you know, make some compromises. You still have a great main camera. That's, that's the fundamental thing. I still think the $500 Pixel 8a is a great deal. If anyone wants to learn more about either the Pixel 8a or other budget phones that they should check out, uh, do you have any good like videos or articles on that? Yeah, we've done you know, the videos from the Pixel 8a, also the Nothing Phone 2a, a really nice design. And that's a perfect example because a lot of these budget phones under 500 tend to feel and look kind of cheap. cheap. Yeah. But nowadays they're bridging that gap where they can look really stylish, really cool. So the Nothing Phone 2a, you can read the review on our website. We also have videos on it on the channel. Obviously the iPhone SE, but hopefully they come out the new one. Next up, the iPhone 16 and yeah, let's be honest, like a lot of you, I wasn't that impressed with this year's releases. Performance, screen sizes, and even the cameras were all a marginal upgrade, but nothing that made me jump out of my seat. But there was one surprise. Apple introduced a new camera control button on the bottom right-hand side. It's for quick access to your settings and shooting modes. And even though I've been using this for a few weeks, I'm honestly still a little bit confused and underwhelmed, but let's see what Mark, who's been reviewing this for a little bit longer, thinks. A little jazz music. Okay, technical difficulties. I might be in the minority here, but I felt like Apple's announcement of the new camera control button would be a little bit more exciting when I got my hands on it. Maybe it came down to seeing them using it in the weekend's music video. I'm like, wow, I can finally get these shots a little bit faster or change the controls in ways that I wasn't able to before, but can I just do everything that this button is supposed to do on the touch screen faster? I think for people who are not familiar with some things like, you know, the depth and exposure and some of the things that like we're used to using, I think it's good in terms of discovery. You're launching it when you don't want to on many occasions. And when you do, it can be a little bit finicky, like you might like skip past like what you were meant to hit. So I, I think the execution could have been better. Like, to your point, there's nothing better than just like using your thumb or finger to mm -hmm. know exactly how far in you want on the image. I wouldn't mind having more options, but I feel like just like making it more of a power feature, I think could help. But ultimately it's like a novelty and I feel like it could wear off unless they really figure out a way to make it more compelling. So before I leave you, is there any other iPhone 16 content that you're working on that, you know, can maybe give us a little bit more insight on this? 
we're definitely going to be doing like follow-ups and like face-offs with other devices and we're also looking towards the galaxy s25 launch early next year but i think it's interesting that like just coming back from full circle the camera control is available on all four models they were that confident that it would be a hit but um, right now there's more backlash than praise now let's talk gaming handhelds you guys know this is one of my favorite topics especially after all the tech takedown videos tony and i have done together for me it's the asus rog ally the original one that's been the best value performance pick for over a year but there's just one big issue and as tony likes to point out it's windows 11. it absolutely sucks on these handhelds so could steam os the operating system found on the steam deck that's rumored to be coming to non-steam devices like this be the fix that we've been looking for let's find out tony Tony, Tony. I see one one controller over there. That's like perfect for today's topic. Of course, yeah, yeah. that's how it is. What is that, a PS5 controller? Yeah, PS5 controller. I, I purposely set that one aside because it has like stick drift, so I'm like, let me not use that one. Well, speaking of controllers, I'm talking about a handheld gaming controller. SteamOS might be coming to all gaming handhelds. So it's not just gonna be exclusive to Steam Deck. Your favorite handheld. Whenever we've done our tech takedowns, whenever we've done our reviews, what, what's the first thing that you always say? I always said Steam Deck is the best because, oh, you're pointing at the camera. It's always the best because of the OS. It's just easy to use. You don't have to like go through Windows and all Windows that. 11 sucks. Yeah, Windows 11 is crap. And I always said that I would love it if we had hardware like found on the ROG Ally or ROG Ally X in this case with SteamOS. So when I heard that news, I was excited. I'm like, yes, yes, this is exactly what we need. But just the fact that you can just navigate through your game library so easily and the fact that it's just integrated right there, that makes a big difference. Like when you have to sign into all these like gaming launchers and stuff on other handhelds, it's gonna be a pain, but you don't have to do that with SteamOS. You sign into your Steam account and you're good. So uh, that'll be a, a big benefit right there, but I'm curious to see how they're gonna implement it on third-party hardware. I don't know if you've read, I think it was Jason who recently did an article on this where he put Linux on this. Conclusion with his article was, it was like 10 or 15% better performance. Yeah, better performance, better battery life. Oh, big shock, you remove Windows 11 and the handhelds work better. I was not surprised by that at all. He could talk about this all day. <laughs> I think it was like 15 to 30 percent better performance and better battery life. I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, I'm surprised by that. No, I'm not. Obviously, I'm not. Because again, Windows 11 is the problem. Before I let you go, are you working on any other gaming handheld content? Like anything cool on the horizon that we should keep an eye out for? Acer, the rumor to be coming out with something. I know Lenovo is also coming out with an update, and we've also heard Phil Spencer talking very well about the ROG allies. I'm like. Is Xbox gonna have one? I don't know. So I think the future is pretty bright when it comes to handhelds. There's a lot of options. That means you and I are gonna be very busy with handheld videos. That's yeah, I think so. <laughs> hey, but no complaints there. And finally, it's time for some quick replies. These are some of my favorite comments or questions from videos that I hosted recently. Can I have the DJI Avada 2? You mean both, dude. I, I want one. I don't have it. I had to send it back after I finished that review. It was great drone. Super, super fun to fly. But you know what, dude? Send me your address and I'll have DJI send you one right away. Just got the Pro. It sucks. I hope they fix the bugs in it. If you turn the always on display off, Siri won't respond unless you go under settings and turn on Siri always listen. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, if your display isn't on, the phone isn't going to know that it needs to respond to you unless you turn on always listening. I mean, aside from the fact that Siri itself might not necessarily work, it's at least going to listen and hear you say, hey, so not a big deal. I mean, just do it once, dude, and it works. And finally, on my last Osmo Pocket 3 video, is the Osmo Pocket 3 worth getting compared to the Insta360 S? Having a 360 camera can be very cool for certain shots. Sometimes for vlogging and just like capturing like a day in your life, they're still not as sharp as compared to a DJI Osmo Pocket. You're not draining your phone's battery. You don't need any additional attachments or hardware to make the most out of this. Both solutions are gonna be great, but for me at least, and if you can relate to this, the Osmo Pocket 3 overall is the easiest to just quickly set up and get great high quality stabilized shots with the least amount of effort. There you have it, our very first episode. Hopefully it was as much fun to watch as it was for me. This is a series that's definitely gonna be fine tuned and grow over time. So if you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback, or things that you wanna see again, just let us know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to use the hashtag AskTG to let us know what you wanna see next. 
Follow us everywhere on socials at Tom's Guide and you can follow me to see what I'm reviewing next. Until the next one, catch you later.